Climate change is hitting us like a freight train, especially this region. This new normal of extreme weather events, this is something we're just starting to understand. 2012, we have a 500 year storm event in Duluth, Minnesota. Then in 2016, 60 miles to the east, we have a thousand year storm event in Ashland, Wisconsin. Then two years after that, in 2018, we have another thousand year storm event that pounds Ashland again and also stretches to Houghton, Michigan and the Upper Peninsula. So in September 2019, the International Joint Commission came to Northland College as part of a listening tour that they were holding in Western Lake Superior on water quality issues. So the International Joint Commission was formed more than 100 years ago by the federal governments of the United States and Canada to help resolve transboundary water disputes all along the U.S.-Canada border, including in the Great Lakes region. It was very interesting to see the, the uh, hydrology here and how that's impacting Lake Superior because it, in the back of my mind, oh, this is a forested area up here. There probably isn't a lot of runoff to be worried about, but that that's not true. We're one of the hotspots for climate-related impacts uh, in this region with the large-scale flood events that we've had, that we've experienced in the last seven years. The lake is becoming more vulnerable to algal blooms as a result of warming temperatures and increases in historic flooding. The realization that the public infrastructure that we have in this region, we already knew was, was getting old and aging, built with previous uh, rainfall realities in mind. And these events have just kind of blown that all wide open and, and uh, we know you know, it's, it's not just the roads, it's not just uh, the sanitary sewer overflows, um, but it's also the, the natural infrastructure, the impacts of that, that date way back to past land use uh, activities around the cutover. As far as we know, um, there weren't any widespread algal blooms occurring prior to 2012. There are a couple of anecdotal reports historically, but they're not well documented or photographed, um, and they certainly don't seem to have been long lived. Uh, so really, it's been since um, 2012 that we started to see algal blooms emerging as a more significant issue in the lake, and it was not until 2018 um, that algal bloom issues, I think, really captured the attention of people in our region and beyond. So Lake Superior is the largest, coldest, cleanest of the North American Great Lakes. It holds 10% of all this fresh surface water on the planet. And the fact that we have these major storm events in the last several years has prompted people all along the south shore of Lake Superior to wonder whether or not we're seeing climate change right before our eyes and what that might mean to the future of the greatest of the North American Great Lakes. For me, as a, as a Haudenosaunee, as a Native person, we've seen this before. The society wants to progress, continue the way it's always done, and has an inertia that will move it along. And it'll continue that way until the roadblock becomes so great that it can't function anymore. This, this new sort of, what appears to be a new reality with climate and flood events are uh, on an already sort of vulnerable landscape are, are really stressing um, not only our, our ecosystems, but our, uh, our built environment. I think we want the commissioners to come away with um, a message of protection for Lake Superior and a message that the lake may be more vulnerable than we previously thought. There's been a lot of diminishment, diminishment of uh, the, the carrying capacity of the land and water, but that uh, it's still enough. It's still enough in the moment. It's still sacred. Uh, but it doesn't excuse us from the responsibility of, of uh, taking care of the place and conducting ourselves with that, that forethought to future generations still on the way. <laughs>